Hey everybody, and welcome to NeverEnding Nightmares. Pretty much the only horror game that came to Ouya. Um, it's out on Steam now. This game is really good. Um, I used to collect survival horror games way back in the day on the PS2, and I still have a pretty big collection of them. This is a really fun game. Um, I'm not going to play all the way through this because I would really like you to run out and purchase it and support it if you like it. Um, it's a game that I really like. I actually sat in a dark room with two friends and played the entire game in one sitting. Um, it was a lot of fun. But I'm going to run through just a bit of this game and I'm going to talk about it. Um, and yeah, alright. Headphones. I am not going to run with headphones, but you are welcome to do that. Um, I'm just going to pan my my microphone audio to the middle so whatever the game does with the left and right is all on its own and not anything to do with me so I'm not too worried about it oh, this game is just absolutely beautiful everything about it is just creepy and weird so you play this guy who sees this vision and then just wakes up and goes about his life now um this game could be misconstrued it could be a walking simulator i mean you spend a lot of time just walking through the house but as you move through the game and interact with things things change so for the first few times that you wake up in your bed um this room's the bathroom and then the bathroom might be covered in blood and then the bathroom might not be there at all and the manor um, moves in a very interesting way around you. Um, and it's kind of interesting because despite this game having no dialogue and no black and white choices that you have to make, um, make you know, on your own. Excuse me. Spooky, spooky things, spooky time. There's our family. Very unhappy. See, as of right now, we see the girl and we see me, and that guy looks like me, right? Well, as you move through the game and as you interact with things, the villain, um, things in certain ways, the game changes to respect to you. So, um, when we were playing through this game, the woman that we stabbed started out as our sister, but through our actions of the game and how the game reacted to us, she turned out to be our wife. Um, and so we had murdered our own wife, and things were very unclear and murky. Um, and part of that is completely on purpose. The game changes depending on how you solve puzzles or what you do and what you don't do and what you miss to give you a different story. Does anybody in the crowd read Latin? I don't. <laughs> um, and so this beginning part of the game is pretty standard. You just walk through the manor. And this game's kind of unique in that there aren't any actual goals. There's no way to escape. Um, the title, Never Ending Nightmares, is actually very accurate. You pretty much just wander through the house, and when you get to something that makes sense, you lose your way and start over. And when you start over, everything's different. Hey, Crow. This game also makes really good use of color. Um, interactable objects are typically in color, and blood is the only other color, so it's really easy to tell what you can deal with and what you can't. Not a huge fan of the creepy turkey. Let's just keep going. Yeah, somebody was making disgusting human sausage. Uh, okay. But I, I really can't recommend this game enough. Um, it's got a, it's really neat because it's got a really low entry um, of gameplay skill required, so it's pretty good for anyone because there aren't very many parts in the game where you have to be skillful or manage your resources. It's all in how you move through the world. So I find that to be pretty charming, especially since most spooky games like Silent Hill really do require a lot out of the player. Um, you have to manage your ammunition and manage your weapons and solve puzzles. This game pretty much just lets you experience it without really stopping you, which is kind of amazing. I forget what happens here. Kind of spooky. Abby, no. You're still sleeping? You promised we'd meet 
for breakfast. Huh? Oh. Are you okay? You look upset. I'm sorry. I, I just had a terrible nightmare. I dreamt you were dead. <laughs> That's silly. I'm fine. Besides, you always promised you'd take care of your little sister. Well, that was when we were kids. It's still true, isn't it? Yeah. Why don't you try to get back to sleep? I'll wait outside. That is super weird that she said, try to get back to sleep, I'll wait outside. Uh, that is, that's, that's a little bit much. I'm going to go this way rather than her way. Let's see, here we go. Broken teeth. That's interesting. I don't remember seeing that ever before. Huh. Hey, sis, are we going for breakfast or what? Man, we're real asthmatic. I, I, I forgot that. I think the main character of this game is asthmatic, and running really distresses him. Ooh, there's not much here. Okay. So I'll take it easy. I won't run too much. That's a... Stairs? Huh. All right. Let's head down. Now, despite me um, kind of applauding this game's branching gameplay, there actually isn't any randomness to this game. It's all very, very kind of crafted, made on purpose. <laughs> and so I really respect that because procedurally generated games are really awesome, but this, this, this spookiness really deserves to be experienced in the order the developers wanted you to and um, it's actually funny because at the end of the game you sort of get to see what choices you made and how they led to which ending and um, it really kind of connects the pieces for you it's a lot like if you ever played outrun where everything branches off into that sort of wide fan of paths it's this is kind of like that only for a spoopy game Let's try the stairs again. They didn't seem to agree with us last time, but we'll give it one more go. It's really hard to tell whether you're progressing or going backwards because death and progress end you in the same place. Both of them end you up back in bed. And I'm pretty sure going down the stairs is not what we're supposed to do. So I'm going to cut that out. <laughs> I can't say enough good about this game. There's a scene um, later in the game where you get to walk um, over broken glass and it is the most distressing thing I have ever experienced in a horror game. Um, because uh, I'm, I'm not gonna spoil it, but things, one of, your, one of your adversaries is very sound sensitive. And um, so as you walk on the, the glass, you have to keep quiet and it's just absolutely horrifying. Can I go this way into the darkness? Yes, I can. Oh, I might have missed some other ways recently because there was lots of darkness that I didn't go in. The other thing that's really interesting about this game is there's really no dialogue, no way to tell whether you're interacting with something or not. And see, here we're back in the bathroom again. Um, there's no text to explain, no way to get into the character's head. What you think is what he thinks, and so on and so forth. Um, I find that to be... make it even creepier, despite looking very much like a Richard Scary book otherwise. Well, there's nothing to do here. I'm not, nope, I'm just, nope, I'm going this way. Calm down, calm down, buddy. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, you guys ready? Here we go. Keep booking it. I should really stop running. I should give him a break, um, not uh, tire him out so much. I might need that stamina. I don't know if it actually does game term damage to you or not, but I do run out of breath. Okay, 
sewing room. Someone stabbed the mannequin in the head. Huh. Well, this is new. Try this way. Don't think this is going to end well. Darkness typically means death, but not in this case. Oh, wait, did you see that? There was blood there. See? Right there in the center of the screen. When the, um, the scratch drawings show it, there's a little bit of blood. I do not want to know what's going on in this room. I'm just going to go this way and hope for the best. There we go. There's our faithful friend, the candle. Now with this, we should be able to traverse those dark areas. So, let's go ex do exactly what I said I didn't want to do and see what happened here. My god, why have you forsaken me? It's me. Well, it's a different me. Picture of ravens. Alrighty. Let's head back and try to go down those stairs that ended in death previously. Oof. Thunder scared me a little bit. I'm going to admit, I'll come out and say it. A little bit startling. I was not prepared for that. There's those windows again. I'm not smart enough to catch them, uh, I don't pay enough attention, but this game is full of lots of little background things, background gags and scenes, um, paintings that move, dolls that switch places. Some of the creepiest stuff in this game has absolutely nothing to do with what's going on. Um, watching, I mean watching the dolls, the toys, the house move around and changed. Like, there you go. I think this, these girls are cracked now, and I don't think they were before. Although, don't quote me on that. Like I said, I have trouble paying attention. Back through here. And then back through here. And then, I believe, if we go back around here, yeah, back here, then we can head downstairs. And these, these stairway scenes are so, so spoopy. Um, I should stop saying that. But walking downward, um, after you've dealt with things that can hurt your feet, um, walking downward blind like that is just terrible. <sighs> All right, here we go. I gotta save my sprint in case I need it, I'm not sure. Oh, it's an ax. That's not good at all. Um, go, 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 oh my god. <laughs> oh, oh. All right, um, I think that's enough of this game for one day. Um, if this is the kind of thing you're interested in, check it out. This game's definitely available on Steam. Thanks for playing with me. I'm going to go touch this axe. feel much safer now.